All right, boys and girls, yesterday, what did we work on? Jalen. Yesterday, we worked on decomposing fractions. Decomposing fractions. What does decomposing fractions mean? Michaela. To break apart. To break apart a fraction into, does anybody know what they're called when we break apart a fraction, these individual pieces, what they're called? J Jada? They're unit fractions. Everybody say unit fractions. Unit fractions. Okay, a unit fraction. So in this hole right here that is broken up into, what is this broken up into? Eight. 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 How many unit fractions are there? Eight. Eight unit fractions. Okay, so that's important. You're going to need to remember that today for, for um, your word problems today. What else did we work on yesterday besides decomposing fractions? Wyatt. We worked on adding and subtracting fractions. Adding and subtracting fractions. Let's see. Who can remember the rule for adding and subtracting fractions? Charles? Ooh, the denominator. The denominator stays the same. In fourth grade, your denominators are always going to be the same. So if it starts with eighths, it's going to end in eighths. If it starts in fourths, it's going to end in fourths. It will not change, okay? We learned that yesterday, okay? Um, what else did we learn yesterday with adding and subtracting fractions? Cassidy? We learned that, uh, that there are two... <coughs> We learned that your equal numerator equal, equal, equals your whole denominator. And that the it equals your whole denominator. Can you explain that to me? And, uh, Take a breath. Okay, now tell me. I, um, yesterday we learned that your two, that your two no, numbers are um, that you're adding or subtracting on the top, it, it changes the numbers and the bottom stays the same. Okay, so your numerators are going to change and your denominators are going to stay, to stay the same even if you're adding, Michaela, or subtracting. Okay? Um, who can tell me about a fraction greater than 1? Chloe. A fraction greater than 1 is if the bigger fraction at the top what, what do you mean a bigger fracture on, on top? Like the bigger number that is supposed to be the denominator, but it's not. Is it supposed to be the denominator? No. No, not supposed, supposed to be the denominator. Greater than uh, the one down on the denominator. So it's greater than your denominator. denominator. So we have, we have a fraction of uh, greater than one, like this one, 5 fourths. It just means that five pieces are shaded in out of a fractional of four. So if we have a fraction greater than one, are we going to have more than one whole? Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. All right, so today we are going to work in our table groups. You are going to use your journals today, okay? So you're going to get six word problems, six word problems, and you are going to work together to solve their problems. So let's look at our target for today. Today you're going to understand addition and subtraction fractions as joining. What is joining mean? What would you be doing if you were joining fractions? Uh, let's go with Jante. What do you think joining fractions would mean? So would I be adding or subtracting? Adding. So if we're joining, we're going to be adding. And if we're separating parts, what would I be doing, Jalen? You would be subtracting. We would be subtracting. <coughs> From the same whole. What does that mean when we talked about yesterday? The same whole. If you're adding and subtracting within the same whole, what did that mean yesterday? We talked about this with the denominators. And how the denominator do does what? It doesn't change. So you're referring to the same whole because you're not going to add a fourth with a seventh. Okay? You're going to have the same denominator, which means referring to the same whole. Okay? So you are going to work in your groups. We are going to use our teaming roles today. Um, we are going to solve word problems that involve adding and subtracting fractions. Hayden, are you focused? Okay, perfect. Here is your success criteria. Anybody can remind me what success criteria is, Charles? Just telling you what your statement is, the, like what you're learning. It tells us what we're learning and what else, Cassidy? It tells us what we're going to be doing today. Tells us what we're going to be doing today and how to achieve the what? Goal. Your target. How are you going to achieve this target? So today, in order to achieving 
adding and subtracting fractions, you are going to solve your word problems together with your group. You must explain your thinking with either pictures, words, or numbers, Michaela. And you must make sure that each group is able to explain how the work you did connects to the addition and subtraction problems within our addition fractions within the problems okay so I'm going to tell you what number the teaming roles are and I'm gonna put it on your desk okay so if you are number one today you are the facilitator the facilitator remember reads the directions make sure that everyone understands what they're doing and reviews the success criteria so if you're the facilitator you're going to be asking each group member Ethan to explain how the work you did connects to the addition and subtraction problem of fractions, okay? The reporter is going to be number two, and I'll write these on the board over there so that you remember. The reporter is number two. They're going to share their answers at the very end of the lesson, okay? Um, and you're also the timekeeper, which isn't gonna work today because we don't have a clock, um, so we won't. I'll, put, I'll, tr I'll try to remind you guys of the time, okay? Um, the recorder is going to be number three. Everyone's gonna kind of be the recorder, but whoever is the recorder, that's the journal you're gonna share for the reporter today, okay? So if you turn out to be number three, your work needs to be the neatest and the nicest because that's the one the reporter is going to share, okay? And then the materials manager. The materials manager is going to come and get your papers um, from me. I'm also going to let you use your desks. I want you to listen. You can use your desks to draw your fractions. But whatever you draw on your desk must then be put into your journal. Because that's your evidence to show me that you understand what we're doing today. OK? All right. I'm going to quickly write your numbers. You're getting what I give you. No, I didn't say the person who was, whoever, that was going to be the job you were going to get. I said, if you get that job, you must write in your neatest, nicest handwriting. I don't want to give you a handwriting job. <laughs> okay, so stop, freeze, put your eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. Let's try that again. Stop, freeze, put your eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. Okay, thank you. So I just wrote your number on your desk. Those are your roles for today, this time. These aren't your roles for forever. These are your roles for today for this math block, okay? So are there any questions before I, tell, before I send you off? Yes, John Tay. Oh, I want you to listen. So in case you have the same question, you don't ask me the same question. Go ahead. Yes, so John Tay asked a great question. Whatever you draw on your desk, is that what you're putting in your journal? Yes. yes. So if you draw the fraction and you, it asks you to draw, um, 2, 6 plus 1, 6, and this is what you draw on your desk to help you solve it, this must go in your journal. Do you have to draw on your desk? No. No. Some of you might not want to take the time to do twice the amount of work. Some of you like to be able to erase it if you make a mistake and do it again instead of doing it in your journal the first time. That's your option. Okay? You don't have to do it that way. What if you move something on your desk and you just like fix it? And That's why you have the marker. You just erase it with your finger and you fix it. Yes, Amari. The facilitator. Okay. All right. Yes, Jaylee, you have a question? You're good? Okay. So number four is the materials manager. So materials manager, if you have number four, you need to get um, however, hold on a second, however many people are in your group and four, white, or four whiteboard markers, do not grab erasers today. You can use your fingers. Okay. It needs to stay. 
It needs to stay at what level? One. one. A one, possibly two. a two, but let's not get loud, okay? You don't, we don't have a lot of time. If you get stuck, raise your hand, but don't come straight to me. You have a group to help you. This isn't one person does all the work and the rest of us hang out. The facilitator is going to make sure that everybody is doing their job. Do we understand? Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, John Tay. Is the reporter. Any other questions? You're good? Okay, materials manager, come grab your materials. Markers are right there. So, oh, well, remember, number one fills in if you only have three people, but that's okay for today. Okay, did you get the markers? You know what we're trying to say, right? We're not saying it's bad. Uh-uh. Cassidy, Cassidy, does that have anything to do with what we're about to do? No. Okay, thank you. Um, Charles, would you like to join a group? Do you want to join with them or do you want to join a different one? You don't want to? Okay, we'll pick a different group quickly. Okay, I see one group ready, two groups ready, three groups ready, four groups ready. Oh, everybody's group is now ready. So you start with number one. You're starting with number one. And if you get stuck, look back at one. Uh, stop, freeze, put your eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. If you get stuck on what you're supposed to be doing, Michaela, Hayden, your success criteria tells you what you need to do to achieve this target today. Understand? Yeah. Okay, off you go. If, if you're going to have a problem besides solving these, then I'll come back. Okay, are you ready? Worry about solving these problems. What's number one? He doesn't have to read the problem. He just reads the directions to make sure we're all doing our jobs. Read the problem, please. Just everybody can read the problem themselves. Okay. So, so what are you gonna do first? Okay. What does sentence number one say? Okay, so she saves three fourths of her allowance every week. No, these are not good. These are not good. It's no. It says she places one fourth in her piggy bank. Then she goes with her mom to the bank to deposit the rest. What fractions does she, what fraction does she deposit? Think about it. You got to discuss it with your table group. So we were thinking about subtracting because it says that it says that she takes she places one board in a bank and then she takes the rest um, and then she said Diane goes with her mom to the bank and then what? Okay, so she saves three fourths. Okay. 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 And then we got two. 
about Should we do the bar bottom one, two, three, four, five? Well, you can have, like, you see how Jada is is drawing, remember yesterday? Mm -hmm. To make sure, because remember, you need a, you, you're going to need a visual. So that would work. Make sure you all agree. Okay, we're coming. All right, so what does the problem say? What does the problem say? Sit down, please. Okay, so who are we talking about? Okay, so Diane. Um, it's the Coriana's group. Okay, so Diane, she saves three fourths. Okay, where's your three fourths? Draw, draw a model. So what would three fourths look like? Ethan and Najee, have a seat, please. Oh, okay. Hurry, hurry, we gotta be quick models, remember? Is this three fourths? What would what would three fourths need to look like? What does the denominator tell you? Okay, so now if she saves three fourths of her allowance, okay, you got good, good, okay, all right. Okay, so now what does the next? Okay, do we all agree that she saves three fourths? Everybody, look at your models. Okay, so she saves three fourths. So what does the next sentence say? Okay, so she places one fourth of this three fourths in her piggy bank. So what did we do yesterday? We are going to subtract one. We're going to subtract one fourth. There you, there you go. So it says Diane goes with her mom to the bank and deposits the rest. What fraction is deposited at the bank? So how much is left? Two fourths or less. So she deposits how much? She deposits two fourths of her of her allowance. Yep. Okay. Okay. So where is that model? If she had three fourths, mm -mm. she had three fourths. I have three fourths. So she takes one fourth and puts it in her piggy bank. Okay. This, so she must spend some of it, right? So if right, so she has. So she, hold, hold on, hold on, hold, I, excuse me, Ex, excuse me, thank you. So if she has three-fourths, which means she's already spent some of it because she only saves three-fourths of it. If she takes one-fourth of it and puts it in her piggy bank, how much does she have left? Two-fourths or one-half, yep. So this shouldn't have been shaded in in the first place, right? You could have done, um, you could have drawn it on a number line. Remember yesterday we worked on number lines too? So, oh yeah, you guys, yeah, you were. Oh, so if, it, oh, I went the wrong way. So if this is three fourths, this is two fourths, and this is one fourth. So if she saved, she started at three fourths and she took one fourth away, she would be at? Two fourths. So you need to draw it in your in your journal. Yes, babe. You don't have to write it on the paper. You can do it in your journal. Mm -hmm. Yep. You don't have to then put it on here because it's in your journal. That way you don't have to do double the work. Okay. I just want this so you guys can look back at your models in case you get confused like tomorrow or something. Okay. Okay, so what'd you get for the next problem? Oh, okay. So you're writing with the second one? You got right? Okay, so. Okay. Okay. So are we ready to move to the next problem? Um. 
Boys and girls, it is way too loud. Jacoriana's group, I can hear you all shouting all the way over here. Uh -uh. We're not going to argue. The facilitator is facilitating the conversations. Thank you. Okay, you guys moving to number two? Okay. Okay, what number are we on over here? Okay, so what are we doing? So what did that give you? Okay, so can you take this fraction greater than one and can you draw it out to see what your mixed number would be? You can? Why not? No, remember yesterday we drew the we drew the fourths and we shaded them. So this one would be what? So it would be so I think you'll see that. Okay. So you're gonna make two two boxes of twelve, two fractions. Okay. Can, are you gonna do that too? Look how look how he's doing it so nice and neat. Like I showed you guys how to do it Run underneath each other. There, that's nice. Cause I want to see what it looks like as a mixed number. And why do you say 19? Oh, you said 19 plus 1? Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's let's make sure that it does. How could you check to see that 9 plus 11 equals 20? You see what? Okay. So do you think it's 20 over 12? It's 20 12? Okay. Mason's going to make sure. You'll be you'll survive. Oh yeah, so we're gonna have to need two. Okay, so what's the answer? Twenty what? Twenty twelfths. Okay, so what it, what kind of fraction is that? A fraction greater than one. So can you take that fraction greater than one and turn it into a mixed number? Or you shade it in, you find out how many holes and how many parts are still like that? Yes. Can you do that? Okay, let me see it. This group's over here is doing it. Let me see you guys do it. You're going to have to draw it. You're staring off into La La Land on me. Mm. Okay, well show me. What are you thinking? It it says you you can you can do it that way too. Um, this group over here. I just said I don't get it. Okay. But I, I don't hear you speaking respectfully is what I'm saying. Thank you. Oh, so here, I have a question. This group right here. What did you get for your denominator? What's your denominator? What was your denominator in the, the in these two problems? Hmm. So what should your denominator be in your answer? Twelve. You got to make sure you're checking each other's work. Okay. No. Do 
So what is what is all this? Can you explain this to me? Where's your second hole? Because this, if I were to look at this, I'd say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Where's your second hole? So you have 20 fourths there. We have 20 fourths. Uh -uh. Don't erase. Put it back. Draw it back. It is going to be a fraction greater than 1. But can you explain to me how you have a denominator of 24? What happened between this denominator and adding this denominator and you getting 24? Okay. So this is one whole. Okay, so this is one whole. Okay, so you shaded in nine twelfths, right? Can you show me where your nine twelfths are shaded? Because I see you have two different shadings going on, like we did yesterday. So where does your nine twelfths stop? Okay, so then you added. Eleven twelfths. So then you went over here and you added on. So this is one hole that has how many parts? Twelve. This is one hole that has how many parts? Twelve. So your denominators are twelve. This is not one hole. You made this one hole. These are two. This is one hole and this is one hole. Right? Because this is nine twelfths and this is eleven twelfths. So if this is one whole, what's your denominator here? Twelve. Twelve. So if this is one whole, what's your denominator here? Twelve. So how did your denominator go to twenty-four? Because that twenty-four would be this whole thing as one whole. You would have broken into twenty-fourths. You made two holes broken into twelve. So remember, what's the rule? What's it written up in there in red? The denominator doesn't change. So why did it change from 12, 12 to 24? This is one hole with 12. This is another hole with 12. You don't then add them together. That would be a whole. That would be a different hole. Okay, Cassidy, you do the same thing. Okay, this group, stop and freeze for one second. Look, look right here. Okay, so you guys all are on the same problem. I see 12 20th, or 20th, 12th, 20th, 12th, 20th, 24th, and 20th, 24th. So, and four people have two different answers. But why, why does it stay the same? Right, it says the same because it's referring to the, no, look at what our target is. Joining and separating parts referring to the same hole. You just changed these holes to a 24. You did the same thing. You made two fractional units of 12 into a one unit of a 24. That's what, when you change this to 24, you're now telling me that you need 24 pieces to make a whole. Is that what this asked you to find? No, it asked you to find the, the answer for 12. So it's 12 20s, but what is this as a mixed number? Since you all have it shaded in, how many holes do you have? How many holes do you have? Two. You have two holes all the way shaded in? No, we have one and a half. So you have one hole. And a half. No. And then how many parts of this are shaded in? Eleven. Why don't you count these pieces up here instead of just guessing for me? Yours are confusing because you started doing this together. So how many do you have? Let's look at let's look at Jada's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight what? 
one and eight twelve would be your mixed number. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you guys. Oh, wait, who's it? This. Amari. Amari. Can you come explain this to me? All right. What did you guys get for number two? Nice. Nice. So nobody over here had the denominator differently. We all had it right. Okay. Why are you writing nine twelve? Oh, you're writing the problem. Okay. Perfect. Going on to three. All right, Amari. Explain to me what you got here. I want to make sure you understand this. What's wrong? Can you explain this to me? What did you do here to get this to get twenty twelve? Okay. So Xavier, can you explain to me what you guys did? Yeah, how did you get that? So you have a fraction greater than one. Oh, so you had to add another fraction. Fraction. Oh, okay. Good. All right, move on to the next one. Stay with your group, please. Um, quickly you wash your well. wash your hands in the in this for washroom, okay? All right, where are you guys at? Oh, number three. Tell me about number three. What are we doing? Hayden. It, why why is it an overlapping fraction? What do we call those? What is it? A fraction greater than one. Yeah. Okay. So, what are we gonna get? Nice. How's it going, Robert? What are, what are you drawing here? What is this? Ethan, can you please sit still? Thank you. Did you do one four fifths here? And three fifths here? So what is this box for? Hold on one second. Well, you don't have to show me again. You just sit, you just, this is showing me. Okay, you don't have to draw another box to show me that. Yes. Okay, so, what did you try drawing it out? What did you get? So you have how many holes? One hole, and then how many parts of this are shaded in a 12? So you, there you go. So that, yeah, you guys already had it. It's just so it's just one hole and then eight twelfths. Like, see how it says two and one fourth up there? Yeah. So you write it just like that, except one and eight twelfths. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You do the same thing, except remember, look, are your two hole, your two frac, your two um, holes equal? Okay. Don't 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 worry about this now. Because I want you to erase it. But remember, they need to be the same. Can I borrow, you think, can I borrow your journal for a second? No, no, I don't want you to, but I want you to see. Oh, at, Ethan, is your work on your paper? Yeah, can I borrow that? So look, look, do you see how when Ethan draws his, he lines them up, this is a 12 and this is a 12? Because it's, they're the same size. Remember when we practiced this when we were doing the equivalents? They're the same size. So you're like you have 12 here, your 12 here are smaller than your 12 here. So are they really the same size? No. So next time make sure that they're the same size. Thank you. Okay. Number three, please.